Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, I had the opportunity to uh, this year work on a residency spine sort of curriculum education project that was really sort of started with uh, Dr. Sharon, Tony and I, and uh, Alina as well, obviously helped out quite a bit with this project. And I'd like to thank everyone for everyone's help with this project over the year. So you know, one of the big problems, uh, you know, with, uh, for that matter, all surgical residency education is you have to balance uh, you know, patient safety with learning. And I think everyone knows that. And that was sort of the drive of this project. How can we uh, take learning um, and uh, you know, expand it to the outside with models, for example? So spine surgery, as well as other types of surgery, all, all neurosurgery really, requires an you know, advanced level of anatomic knowledge, spatial awareness, dexterity. Uh, and you really do, again, once, again have to balance the uh, training aspects with the patient safety, and everyone knows that. And so how do, you, how do you do it? How do you go from being an intern to being a chief resident? What's the process, and how can we improve it? Uh, you know, so I had the opportunity to focus in on spine with this, and uh, you know, we thought maybe one way we could do that is with spine models. So they are some, something called like a biofidelic spine model, which is, it just tries to mimic life, uh, lifelike situations. You know, they have models with CSF, bone, uh, soft tissue, fascia, et cetera. And we were able to locate the spine models uh, and uh, purchase some in order to help institute a curriculum for spine uh, you know, model learning in the residency. And we had about four sessions over the course of this year, uh, you know, kind of going into that. Now, the, some of the positives of the spine models are that they can uh, simulate pathologies. Again, you can even uh, you know, pour, pump water into it to emulate a dural, dural sac so that you can repair CSF leaks, et cetera, uh, fractures. And there's actually a lot of things that you can do with them. You can also emulate scoliosis models. Uh, or to start, we got two just entire spine models without any type of underlying complication, just so that we can kind of get used to the models and start. This is what they look like. You can see they have like something that appears to be like skin, muscle, fascia, fat, and then the bone underneath. And it's hard to make out, but this is the dural sac that uh, they have uh, created. And, uh, you know, we did this over the course of the year. And, you know, during the different sessions, we gave out sessions, uh, questions, et cetera. And we really tried to focus in on, you know, uh, mid-levels and higher. You know, one of the problems with traditional cadaver labs, at least in my experience here, is that we have one or two cadavers. And it's like you have 10 people um, at a cadaver. And sometimes it's hard to really get a lot out of it. And so we're trying to make sessions smaller and really kind of cater to certain uh, PGY levels. And you know, what we found is that in general, through an anonymous survey, residents felt that you know, they had a stronger understanding of the anatomic relationship with the lumbar anatomy, for example. They felt more comfortable understanding different steps of the surgery. Uh, I'd like to thank again, Dr. Sharon, Dr. Prasad, Dr. Heller, different attendings who helped us uh, to organize and uh, teach these sessions. Um, and they also felt more comfortable with localization, which is you know, one of the key things that we do with spine surgery. It's one of the first steps you have to do with spine surgery. You have to know how to do it. And I think that you know, we've had a lot of success with this. There's a long way to go, no doubt. Uh, but you know, the other side that I think is a really big positive is it also brings the residents together. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, look at Goldie here. He's extremely happy. He's, uh, put, he's hammering in this, uh, this uh, he's doing a percutaneous uh, you know, pedicle screw placement under fluoroscopic guidance, and he's extremely happy doing this. Look at him. On, on top of that, we have all the other residents uh, you know, performing different types of procedures, learning from Dr. Sharon how to interpret uh, you know, fluoroscopy, doing uh, you know, laminectomies, screw placement. We did screw placements, lumbar, thoracic, cervical. Um, and uh, exposure, et cetera. And uh, it's just a kind of a nice thing to do sometimes on the weekends as a group. And, uh, you know, to get away from sometimes all the stress uh, and also in the operating room where, you know, you, you know, you have to be worried obviously always about patient safety and to, you know, do it on a model like this. Um, so, you know, in conclusion, I think that 
you know, we're going to continue to use these models. We're going to continue to develop, uh, you know, a spying curriculum. Now, some of the next goals are to try to start incorporating cadavers in as well, no matter what, but with smaller sessions and more tailored to specific types of sur surgery. So, so, for example, an X lift after going through a lumbar uh, spine model session. Um, and that would be more for like mid levels and higher. We want to try and develop a you know milestone checklist, um, you know based off of resident year, potentially even up to fellowship year, and what people should be able to do. And uh, we're going to continue developing this. So uh, thank you so much.